Before we get started on today's video, I just want to thank the community for raising over $3,500 for Color of Change, which again is the largest online resource for mobilizing people to support the Black Lives Matter movement, help educate others, and make sure that we're making a change against racial injustice, not in just this country, but across the world. So again, if you want to donate, if that is something that is on your heart, please feel free to follow the link down at the top of the description. Now, without further ado, let's talk about exactly how you can tell the difference in fortresses between the hexes, the charms, and the overall buffs just by looking at them. Now, I'm not exactly sure who to give credit to for this particular graphic, but as you can see on the screen, it wasn't made by Orange Wizard. If you know who it was made by, let me know down in the comments below so I can give proper credit where it is due. But again, as you can see, all of these hexes, all of these charms, and the general buffs that you can also see at the bottom of the image are different in every you know, circumstance. So they will have a certain appearance that once you're in the lobby, you can see people hexing, you can see people, you know, using deterioration versus weakness and all that good stuff. So I want to go ahead and talk about the difference of each. I'm going to break it down into three categories. First, we're going to talk about the hexes. Second, we are going to talk about the charms. And third, we will talk about the overall buffs that you can get from the Magizoologist or the professor. So I don't know how many times you share the same issue as I do. Sometimes I'll be in a fortress and I'll look around and I'll see that I've been buffed, but I'm not exactly sure what it is. I don't know if it's bravery. I don't know, you know, if I've been protected. I don't know if I have proficiency yet. And outside of being in the encounter screen and actually fighting with a foe, you can notice and take notice of those things simply by watching and simply by seeing when you're in the lobby and like say as an or I have to hop out and I have to hex or I have to cast uh, you know, focus charm on my friends a lot. And I will be able to see a lot of these hexes flying around in the fortress if I just pay more attention. So hopefully this will help us all kind of get a little bit better at paying attention at what's going around in the lobby. So we can use this a bit of a more advanced technique to know exactly what's going to be going on who has what buffs, who's passing what to who, and uh, yeah, all of that good stuff. So well, first of all, let's jump right into the hexes. So the first thing I'm gonna do, as you can see on the screen here, is cast a confusion hex on the Urkling. And what the confusion hex looks like is a pink web that slowly trickles down. And then weakness is going to be more of a pink aura that you can see kind of slings up against the werewolf. And it almost looks like they're being attacked before I actually get into that. So those are the differences between weakness and confusion. And I'll show that one more time. Again, weakness looks like a pinkish web slowly trickling down uh, uh, over the enemy. And then weakness looks more like it is attacking and slashing a few times and it generates this little pink aura around the foe. Next, we have deterioration. Deterioration is pretty easy to spot once you know what to look for because it literally just looks like a fireball is being cast on the werewolf and deterioration of course you know relegating that in your mind to fire destruction it can you know it seems pretty obvious at the time the bat bogey hex is pretty simple as well you think of bat bogeys i think of like a yellowy nasty ball that's just covering the enemy and you can actually see that in this dome shaped image it's like they're being covered in bat bogeys which of course is slowly weakening them over time that was a pretty plain and simple run through of the hexes so now we're going to go ahead and move on to charms first starting with the protection shield when a protection shield is given to a player it will appear around that whole player encompassing them as though they're being protected by a shield and the cool effect here is like shimmery dragon scales so if you see those shimmery dragon scales happening in the fortress over one of your uh, your fellow combatants, then you know that they are being protected. Now with the stamina, the heal, and the focus received are sort of similar here. The stamina heal actually looks like a white ball of light. So almost think of, you know, uh, when Ron describes the Deluminator and himself teleporting, that's what I actually think of because it's a white ball of light that literally just goes into the player, and that is a heal, a basic heal charm that you can receive from the Magizu. Now the revive that you will see is like a swirly blue light. It's almost like a, a backwards tornado. It kind of goes up and then they bring them back. And this will be pretty apparent because you'll see their timer ticking down and then it won't be ticking down anymore. So you pretty much know when somebody's getting revived anyway because it's super obvious. But I did want to go ahead and say that as well. And then like I mentioned before, the focus received is sort of like a blue bubble 
or a blue wave that sort of washes over the player in a more of a circular fashion. Whereas with proficiency in just a minute, we'll see it looks a little bit different than that. Finally, the last two main buffs that you see that you can be given by either the professor or the magizoologist are of course proficiency and bravery. And as you can see in the image, and as you may have well noticed in the game, proficiency when it's cast over you looks like a wave, just like a big splash of water, almost like you're hit with a water balloon or something like that. So um, look for that watery splash and you'll know that you have proficiency on your side. And of course, finally, bravery. If you look at the image here, bravery looks like fireworks that are just kind of shooting off uh, out and around the players. And I, being an American, you're going to have to forgive me. Being an American, it makes me think of fireworks on like the 4th of July or something like that, you know, <laughs> land of the free, home of the brave. So that's how I have the little mnemonic that I use for my brain in order to remember fireworks equals bravery. So you can go in against those elite foes and deal extra damage. Guys, I know this wasn't a super long video. I'm trying to make a few easy guides, just quick tutorials about fortresses, and we'll have a few coming through these next few days and, you know, over the next week or so, just so you can have a more informed experience in fortresses. I hope that you're enjoying the night bus as much as I have been these last couple months. I have gained so many red books and I'm trying to become a better teammate. So I want to put out guides that are for you all that I have been able to learn and then improve my gameplay. So hopefully we waste less time and I'm not asking myself if I have bravery. I'm not asking myself who's been confused or deteriorated because I can actually see it physically happening on the screen when I'm inside of the lobby. If this video did help you out in any way and if this was some good content, let me know by hitting that thumbs up button down below. It really does help out the channel. It shares the video with other viewers who are looking for similar content, as well as clicking that red subscribe button and ringing those bell notifications so you're made aware the next time I produce a piece of Wizards Unite content. Again, please check out Color of Change. It is an amazing, amazing organization that is helping shape the world and the future and making it a better place. I really, really am excited and just overwhelmed by the support from the community for that aspect absolutely incredible and 100 percent wonderful thing that has been going on uh, within the community so i'm thankful for all of you if you're looking for fellow players and you're looking for witches and wizards to interact with on the daily and get in fortresses please join the discord we have a really really vibrant community over there we have been blowing it up lately and i'm super excited to get to meet more people and play with more people in fortresses specifically if you already have a community i'm not trying to tear you away from that i just wanted you to know that that's kind of what's up and we've got something going on down there. There are all kinds of links down there. I've got social links to Twitter, Instagram, Twitch, if you're into that kind of thing. I never really stream over there, but it still exists. I've got a Patreon for support if that's something that you're interested in too. And so I would love to see you get involved and I would love to speak with you on a one-to-one -one level in any shape, form, or fashion. Thank you all so much for supporting the channel. Thank you for having a great attitude and a wonderful outlook. And I hope you have a great day. And I will see you in the next video. Until next time, peace.